The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. My partner Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysik. And uh we are literally less than a month away. Well, from NFL football. That's the one I'm more excited about, of course. Uh but Malik, we are even closer to college football. Who cares about pro sports? <laughs> Who cares? I do. We want to see UMass oh, stop play it. Florida International. Stop <laughs> it. We want to see UTEP. That's what we want who, to see. Who is we? Who is this we we're talking about? The army of college football fans. Oh, my gosh. We're ready. Um, Week zero is almost here. Either way, we're back to football season already. It was a, a long month or two. Yeah. I watched the first episode of Hard Knocks yesterday. See, that I That kind of officially means football is back. I did not. I saw the promotion. I kind of forgot about it last night. I'm going to be honest. It was just, It was okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. heard. So what I heard is people saying that Aaron Rodgers is likable. It it was literally like it almost seemed like an agenda to make Aaron Rodgers like the greatest leader in a person ever yeah. in the in the history of Jets football. Mm-hmm. Which is it was hilarious how much everybody was just we love Aaron. I can't wait to get through the season to see how how they feel. Yeah, but how it goes. Yeah, it, it was it it was cool seeing him in training like in drills and stuff throwing the ball just seeing how incredible of a thrower of the football he is but all the other stuff eh. like he's he's a good teammate him and, yeah. Nathan- him and Nathaniel Hackett are friends mm-hmm. we knew that already yeah the uh the Lions are hosting their joint practice this week with the New York Giants um all the reports have been good but I will say uh, do you hear many negative <laughs> things from any training camp i mean because uh, we we joke about all the clips that people post all the time most but. of the negatives i honestly see are from like not actual like journalists mm-hmm. it's when when you go on twitter and you just see the trolls yeah the the like twitter trolls and people that just push agendas are almost more important and more visual than journalists at this point and I don't know about and your feed, but my feed listen, is filled with Dak interceptions. It, it's Dak interceptions for like the first few days of training camps opening. It was a bunch of people posting. There were videos of like a- Atlanta Falcons receivers dropping a pass or a DB oh, getting yeah. an interception, and everybody would be like, "Show the quarterback in all caps." Yeah, there <laughs> was they wouldn't show Desmond Ritter throwing the ball. Yeah, there like, was stuff like that. There was the one that he threw to Kyle Pitts. And it went like through Kyle Pitts' hands, and they're like, "Desmond Ritter needs to be a better quarterback." <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like that. That's the at that point. That's when I'm like, I, I'll just watch the clips and get my own opinions because right, we know these Twitter trolls and yeah. these, these people are ridiculous. Yeah. Um, did you watch the Hall of Fame game at all? I watched some of it. My, I, I, my I, only I, real takeaway was, I'm still excited for what Dorian Thompson Robinson could be. Exactly. That yeah. that was my big thing. My like, big draw is I wanted to see what DTR could do. Um, did you see the clip of Aaron Rodgers calling the like sixty yard bomb that Zach Wilson threw? Yeah. How do you feel about? It, that? I mean, it was, it was a part of the Hard Knocks episode. I kind of fell asleep oh, for like right. the last ten minutes. Yeah. But I I was like the first half of the Hall of Fame game. They showed mm-hmm. like most of the clips of him on the okay. sideline with that, and like yeah, they all celebrated when Zach threw the yeah, yeah. that pass and everything. Yeah, I, I watched like two minutes of the Hall of Fame game. It's it's worse than preseason. Listen, a, after, even though I heard afterwards Demarcus Ware singing the national anthem was kind of like a tribute to um yeah Demarius yeah Thomas. Demar- Demarius Thomas that that still kind of threw my vibe yeah, off from was, the from the point de, I heard Demarcus Ware's voice and I looked up at the TV yeah I pressed mute and I just waited till the game was coming on it it was yeah. a little it was off putting a little much I think um. But this weekend we got some real preseason games. Um, again, the Lions will be playing the Vic or the Giants. 
Um, again, I don't really care about preseason. It's similar to summer league for basketball, maybe a little bit better. Um, cause you do see starters at times and I really want to see what the young guys do for the lions. I think that's a big, a big deal. I want to see what Jameer Gibbs looks like. Cause I'm sure he'll get some snaps. Um, I honestly, I want to see like what the depth chart looks like too, because obviously the wide receivers are a big question mark for the lions. Um, the defensive guys. I would assume some of the new guys are going to get a couple snaps here and there, and then we'll see some of the younger guys in there as well. Um, but I'm just curious. I just want to see some resemblance of a good team. Now, they don't have to win or anything because we all know they famously went 4-0 in the preseason, lost 16 straight games. Um, so the preseason doesn't mean anything, but it gives you a good idea of what the team is going to look like. Um, just a little bit, um, what would be, who would you say is your, like the guy that you're looking out for? I, I guess Gibbs is kind of the, the popular one, but is there somebody else that you could think of? I'm excited to see Jack Campbell. I wonder, I wonder if they're going to have him play most of the game. Yeah. Like we assume he's going to be a starting linebacker. Yeah, he probably he probably could play the first half. I, I assume he's going to get almost every snap of the first half. But after, do you let him keep going after that? Usually, just to like test him. I, usually not. Like even he's going to be really important. Like so. even young guys, like starters. I usually just see like if if they're gonna if they're vying for a starting spot, they're usually going to play like one half. Um, and if Jared Goff plays, it'd be like a drive or two. Um, and then it kind of goes varying degrees. Like Gibbs, he might play the full first half as well, um, but he also might just play the first quarter. It's hard to say. Yeah, I I wanted I want to see how all the rookies look. Uh, the one I'm the one I'm not like afraid of in terms of seeing if they play bad. Jameer Gibbs is gonna make people look stupid. Yeah, that is it is what he does. As as soon as he steps on the field, it's what he's faster than most people. Mm-hmm. He's gonna destroy linebackers and safeties on routes. Like it's he's gonna do what he does. But yeah, seeing those other draft picks like Brian Branch, he's he's made some plays in training camp. Yeah, that stuck out. I, I want to see what he looks like, mm-hmm. and some of the new free agents too. Like, uh, what's his name? Sutton. What was his first name? Cam, Cam Sutton. Sutton. Yeah, I want to see Cam Sutton. Yeah, ma- ma- mainly the the new guys. Right. The one, the other one that are two guys that I'll mention that I'm I'm kind of interested in as well. Um, Mo Ibrahim is listed as like the fourth string running back at the moment. I did not know he was on the Lions. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was one of the free agent signings. Yeah, hmm. and so like undrafted signing or whatever it was. He's just a bowling ball. But I'm curious to see if he can maybe jump because Justin Jackson is still listed as the third guy. So I'm curious if maybe he could make a jump because I think he has potential to be did better. They, did Craig Reynolds? Did they get rid of him? Uh, that I don't remember. I'd have to I, look. I, I, wasn't he was the third string guy last year, Craig Reynolds? Yeah, and then people were talking about Justin Jackson um, this offseason, which I didn't think he was still on the team. Um, let me see if I can pull up the uh, the roster real quick. Just because, like, I don't know. David Montgomery, he's usually good health-wise, but this team is on the verge of being that good that we need – Good backups at this point. Uh, they have nope. They don't have well. In this, they have like six six running backs. I don't have a depth chart for the Lions. I would be shocked if Craig Reynolds wasn't the third guy because I I, I assume Justin Jackson can't be that great. Yeah. All of a sudden to just jump him when he was like one of their main guys in the rotation. Yeah, you might be right. I, well, this the one that I'm looking at on the Lions, DetroitLions.com, has David Montgomery, one, Jameer Gibbs, two, Justin Jackson, three, and then for four, it's Craig Reynolds, Jamar Jefferson, and Mohamed Ibrahim battling okay. for that fourth spot. So apparently all the reports are true that Justin Jackson has just looked better this year, I guess. Um, so that'll be actually really interesting. Anyway, speaking of depth, that I, this is what I wanted to segue into. The Lions just made a quote-unquote big signing 
for their depth. They got Teddy Bridgewater, one of the best backup quarterbacks on the free agent market and probably in the league. What are your first thoughts getting Teddy Bridgewater on this team? Do you love it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? How do you feel about it? I mean, it? I like it. It's better than Nate Sudfeld. Yeah. it's uh, He could be a good mentor for Hendon Hooker. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, hopefully it doesn't happen, but if Jared Goff went down for any amount of time, right, you would be somewhat confident that, yeah. Yeah, he could do the job at least at a decent level. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't just be out of games nonstop. Right. So I I think it's a good signing. Yeah. I, kind I kinda, of funny how it's, it kind of seems last minute, so he's going to have to, like, learn the system pretty quickly. But Right. Yeah. But he's – I mean, he's been bounced around so many times nowadays. Mm-hmm. I don't think it would be that hard for him. Um. But, yeah, I, I kind of agree. Like, I'm, like, some people were so excited about this signing. For me, it's like – He's still a backup quarterback. Um, it's definitely good because it, it again it shows that this team is moving in the right direction. That we're like worried about our backup quarterback, um, and you hate to see Goff go down. But if it is something minor where he has to miss, you know, three or four games, Teddy Bridgewater could probably win two of the four games that he's going to miss, if not more, depending on you know the schedule, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it just gives you that safety net that if something happens to Goff for a little bit that we would be okay. Now, if Goff, you know, God forbid, that would be out for an extended period of time, then I'd be a little more worried just in general anyway. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a good signing. I still wish they would have signed one of the other, like, defensive guys that were still out there. Like, we saw uh, Yannick Ngakwe get signed and uh, Justin Houston also get signed. I know Justin Houston's pretty old at this point, but just a veteran defensive guy. I wish maybe would want to – went for one of those guys. But I didn't I didn't really see any news of what their contracts were, so I guess I don't know for sure. Um I think that's all I had on the Lions. I just wanted to bring up the preseason stuff coming up. Um we'll get into more NFL stuff as the preseason goes along. We'll, we can talk about certain teams and divisions and stuff like that. Um I'm I'm already I think preparing myself to become the villain if things go sideways because fans are getting so excited by, like you said, the Teddy Bridgewater news. Why is that making you so excited? Yeah. Why are these short glimpses of training camp highlights making you excited? Mm-hmm. I want the Lions to be good, but if the, but if you, if your brain and your head is going to like go super, super huge, yeah. and you're just going to be big headed and think like, ah, it's going to be so funny. If things fall apart, just because Lions fans can't handle any type of little success. Yeah. Just imagine, though, if they beat Kansas City week one. Watch what will happen. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> they they literally, I, I could see this being so possible that they go to Arrowhead, shock the world, and then they lose to Seattle next week. That's very possible. <laughs> Seattle's going to be a good team, so it's not like that would be a huge surprise. Yeah. But it, it's that will it, be a very lion start to the season. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, the other one little thing that I wanted to talk about is the the FIBA USA basketball team. Just for a minute, um, they're also still just in their preliminary games. Um, they don't play till the end of the month is when the actual tournament starts. But they got some warm up games. I think they're headed to Spain. Uh, they're probably already there now, actually, and uh, they'll have like I think three more warm up games. But they played against Puerto Rico the other night, and it was a close first half, which is always nerve-wracking when USA goes into FIBA because Team USA doesn't do very well in the FIBA championship normally, um, or they haven't in the last so many years. They always seem to struggle. Um, and Puerto Rico is usually a decent team, but nowadays they don't, they don't really have anybody. Their best player is Tremont Waters. Tremont Waters is getting busy out He's, there. I, 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 I've loved him no since college. No disrespect to Tremont Waters. I've loved him yeah. since college. But yeah, it was a mix of like some some dudes fresh out of college and some yeah. dudes that are in college. Mm-hmm. It was a weird team. Yeah. So after the first half, the USA blew them out, luckily, in the end. Won by like 40. Um, the big news, though, well, sort of big news, Cade Cunningham apparently was uh, he was the news of the like standout. 
of the, the whole, last few weeks of their camp of the whole team. Now he decided to be on the select team um, because of his injury. He wanted to make sure that he was fully healthy, so he didn't want to be on the the main roster. But he did want to play against the main roster, and apparently he let them up. And he was the one that, like, throughout the whole camp, played really well. Normally the select team, like they say, typically gets the the main roster one time, and then the main roster kind of does their business and shows that they're the they're the reason they're going uh, to the tournament. But um, I don't know. I, I take it as good news that Cade's playing that well. I was a little nervous about Cade coming back, I guess. Um, some people are thinking he's going to pick up right where he left off, and it looks like those people are going to be right. But to me, this is a little more a little more reassuring at this point. Um, do you have any anything that you took away from that, or do you just think it's whatever? I am. I'm really excited for what he can be this upcoming season. If he's healthy, they should win at least like 29, 30 games at least if he's healthy, along with all the other guys coming back and the veterans they've added and the veterans they still have. And Monty Williams being the new head coach, I'm I'm not going to go crazy and say they should make the playoffs. I think there is a chance they could contend for a play-in spot. Mm. And if Cade is – Improving to a level that everybody thinks he's going up to. You have that level player as your number one guy. It's possible to make a run at the play-in. Yeah, We saw what OKC just did with Shea Gilgis-Alexander basically becoming a superstar and a bunch of like second and third year dudes around him that mm-hmm. are slowly getting better. They got to the play-in and almost made the playoffs. Yeah. Because they played so well together and Shea was just a star. And everything made they they knew how to play together, and everything just made sense. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that Detroit could be that. I'm excited to see what Kate is doing. Jalen Duran also played well on the camp. Mm-hmm. They 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 just things are making sense for the first time in a long time. Yeah, and that's exciting. Mm-hmm. My passion still isn't all the way there, but right. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm yeah. I'm a little nervous. I'm I'm also hesitant. Um, it's scary when the Lions and the Pistons are both looking like they could be good again at some point. Um, so it's it's hard to buy into sometimes. Um, one more thing on the the basketball team, the USA team. Do you think this team has a chance to actually win? They got Jalen Brunson, Anthony Edwards, Mikhail Bridges. Uh, who's their power forward? I don't. Was Bobby Portis the starter? I don't think he was the starter. No. And then I know that Jaron Jackson was the Yeah, start Jaron Jackson center. is the center. Ooh. Was Paolo didn't start at the four, did he? Oh, he might be the no well. He might be. Oh, I can't remember who the starting four was. Yeah, it's Paolo. Right? Okay. That's who they're showing. They're not really showing their Oh, no, it's Brandon Ingram. So, Brandon Ingram, Jaron Jackson, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson, Mikhail Bridges. That's the starting five. Okay. Do you think that that, that roster, like, has a chance? When they, you look at, you know, like, Luka Doncic is playing for his national team. Um, I think that might, that may be I, – I don't know how talented Spain is. Like their teams used to be stacked. I don't know how I don't know how stacked they are. Yeah, Luca and Slovenia are gonna have a chance to beat Team USA because Luca, he he plays at such a high level mm-hmm. in international play, and it looks like he's in really good shape. Yeah. So, Slovenia could beat him, but Team USA might be the most talented team overall. Yeah, I would say Team Canada is probably the next closest. Yeah, I I don't know if um. Earlier today at the half, Germany was beating Canada fifty to thirty four. Oh, really? So I'm about to check. Yeah, because I mean, it, it again. We've said it before. Like, it's not like it used to be where U.S. would just dominate teams. Nowadays, it's just everybody has someone in the NBA. It feels like 
um, that's just around. And it's quality, not just some. I'm trying to find the. Dude. I can't find the final score. But clearly, Canada isn't all the way there yet. Okay. Because I don't think Germany. Well, Dennis Schroeder is like might be the best player on Germany. They also, I think they might have Franz Wagner. So they have a few good players, actually, Germany. Yeah, I think yeah. they have both the Wagner. They have a few good players. I mean, even I gotta watch the highlights. I always think yeah. it's interesting. Like, um, the Philippines have Jordan Clarkson on their team. Kyle Anderson is playing for China. Really? Did you? I don't know what the story was, but he got Chinese citizenship and he's playing for China. Huh? Yeah. That's not even showing it on this one. Also, Jose Alvarado was at the Puerto Rico game, but he didn't play. I don't know what it was exactly. Hmm. Because he, he's supposed to be like be the guy on that team. Right. And I, Greece has the Antetokounmpo's on him, so you know that Giannis plays super good as well. Yeah, they're they're going to run up against some teams that are that have played well together for years and have star power, so it's not going to be easy. Right. I was they're going to get tested. I was trying to find what Spain's roster looks like nowadays. Um but there's so many groups. Or Australia. Australia is always a good team. They got Dyson Daniels, Dante Exum, Josh Giddy, uh, Josh Green, Joe Ingles, Jock Lawndale, Patty Mills, Matisse Thibel. They're gonna be a they're gonna be a solid team. Um Germany has Isaac Bonga, um, Dennis Schroeder, Daniel Tice, Mo and Franz Wagner. So they'll be all right. Yeah. Um Japan, Japan has Yuta Watanabe. That's all they need. I don't think they're going to go very far in the tournament with just with Yuta Watanabe as the star. Uh-huh. But good luck to Japan. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. I forgot Slovenia has uh, Vlado Kanchar. Slovenia has Jordan Morgan. You remember him? Really? <laughs> Former no, Michigan. I know big who man. Jordan Morgan is. I think he's. I think because he's been playing in Slovenia for a while, he has citizenship. Hmm. Or he got it, and yeah, he's playing for their national. He had like 10 points and like five rebounds for Slovenia. Okay. It was surprising <laughs> seeing him in the highlights. Yeah, let's see. Spain, Rudy Fernandez, still killing it for them. Rudy's still playing. That's incredible. Victor Claver, Santi Aldama. That's uh, Spain? Santi Aldama? Yep. The Hernan Gomez brothers. Oh, my God. Listen, I'm back on Spain. <laughs> Just stop right there. You didn't need to say anything more. I don't know if you remember. I might cheer for Spain. Alex Abrinas. I remember Alex Abrinas. Yeah. Number eight for the Thunder, of course. Yeah. He always usually plays pretty. I like that. Pretty team. solid. He's a big guard. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They're not too bad. When I get home, I'm I'm watching like, oh, they, all the FIBA highlights. When they I get also home. have Usman Garuba. He's not bad. Not impressed <laughs> by him yet, but everybody else, I'm in. Okay, let's. Yeah. See. Okay, last one. Canada has Nikhil Alexander Walker, R.J. Barrett. We o- know Canada has a yeah, O'Shea they Brissett. Got a, they got a squad. Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort, Zach Eady is playing for them. Huh? Apparently, Big Eady. Uh, that's oh what. Oh my god. That's what it's saying. I have so many highlights to watch. <laughs> Shea Gilgis Alexander, Corey Jeez. Joseph, Jamal Murray, Kelly Olynyk, Kevin Pangos. I wow. haven't heard that name. Yeah. Jeez, Kevin Pangos. That's. That's or something long. else. Uh, Dwight Powell. Playing for who? And that's Canada? About it. Yep. I didn't know he was Canadian. Yep. Uh, France. France is always usually pretty good as well. Rudy Gobert. Um, Elio Cobo. Frank Nielakina. Nick Batum. Gershon Yabuselli. Evan Fournier. Nando DiColo. Lavia is always pretty good too, man. I I need to stop going through all these teams. I'm watching. I always kind of I'm, I'm here because international like international players that are just good in the NBA turn into stars mm-hmm. when they play for their national teams. Yeah, yeah, they they turn it up a notch. Alrighty, let's get into college football a little bit. It's kind of the thing we said we're going to talk about the next uh, couple weeks a little bit, um, and then slowly sprinkle in NFL as we get closer and closer. But uh, college football has been doing some crazy stuff. They are realigning, and in that realignment, realignment, they're basically dissolving the Pac-12. <laughs> that's that's basically the gist of it. 
Um, two more teams have joined the Big Ten, Oregon and Washington. And then the Big 12 has added Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah. And then there's also talks of Stanford and Cal possibly moving to the ACC. Let's start with the Big 12. We'll get to the Big 10 because that's the more important one. What do you think this does, not only for those programs, but the other programs that are already in the Big 12, adding Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah? I honestly, I am personally excited for what the new Big 12 has become. This is one of the only instances of where, like of all this happening where I, I'm excited for what this new conference of the Big 12 is becoming without Texas and Oklahoma. I like the fact that they were able to add these West Coast teams. They already had Texas Tech and TCU. They had some of those Southwest teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it'll make them – they they won't be one of the like highest – conferences in terms of championship they're going to be a stacked basketball conference yeah I, I was strictly thinking football at first basketball they're going to be the real deal mm-hmm. and they're going to take up a lot of tournament spots so they're going to be great on that side yeah football they're going to be pretty good they there are a few programs that might be keep getting better over mm-hmm. the next few years so yeah they could have like the like playoff spots between like 10 and 12 if they continue this 12 team playoff idea which might need to change because the way conferences are going, a lot of it might not make sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like the way the new Big Twelve is going. Um, did you just want me to talk about the Big Twelve, or just like we can go right into the Big Ten as well if you want? I mean, I I want to I kind of want to talk about the impact. It's what is what's happening to the Pac twelve. Okay, yeah, because I feel like it's it's one of the like most depressing. <laughs> things to to happen in college sports in a long time and it didn't have to happen Mm. like that conference became so greedy with like tv contracts and the money overall to like you didn't have to have the pac-12 channel yeah the pac-12 network yeah that nobody has but i mean the sec has it the big 10 has it and everybody can watch those (laughs) why not the (laughs) pac-12 like you you, unless you're on that side of the country you you can't watch the pac-12 channel the Pac-12 network, they they could have. I think they they could have had a deal with ESPN, and they just they decided to like deny that, so they stuck with the Pac-12 network and it's done nothing. Yeah. Uh, just every every strategy they've had, it, it's just it just hasn't it hasn't worked out, and now, I think they they expected USC and UCLA to stay, and they both left. Mm-hmm. And then they expected Oregon to Washington to stay, and they both just dipped <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just – I don't understand what the Pac-12 thought. Like, they, they they just thought they were untouchable or something. Like, they'd just be around forever. And this wasn't possible. Meanwhile, everybody was making moves and ha- and having conversations over the past few years. Mm-hmm. Now they're down to four schools. Yeah. What used to be the Pac-10 and turned us to the Pac-12 is now the Pac-4. Yeah, it's looking ugly. And like you said, Cal and Stanford are already weighing their options. The ACC could be on the table, and that will just leave Washington State and Oregon State. And I don't know what they would do, honestly. Like, yeah. I, I feel really bad for Oregon State because they they love the rivalry with Oregon. And unless Oregon like decides to make it a non-conference rivalry, like yeah. a, a yearly thing, that might just be done. Mm-hmm. Like two schools in the same state that have been a staple of, like, each other's history for so long. Right. And D- D- Washington State also. They, it's just unfortunate. Yeah. I, I think like, that's the weirdest – that's the hardest part for me is, like, if you move, and, and especially, like, in that scenario where it's Oregon, Oregon State, like, possibly losing out on that rivalry stinks the most, I think. Like, just imagine if, like – again, this is pretty unrealistic, but, like, if Michigan and Michigan State <laughs> went to different conferences – it just sounds silly. Um, so I don't know. It, it's it's tough. Yeah, and I, I, I really I lean towards something Missouri's football coach, Eli Drinkowitz. He was interviewed a few days ago, and he, he was asked a question um, about the state of college football and everything that's happening. And I really lean towards his point of saying 
Football is going to be fine. Yeah. All the money is going towards football. That's why most of these schools are moving towards conferences to make more money. The students are getting the NIL deals. These big brands are going to be okay. Right. Softball, baseball, volleyball, swimming, all these other sports that don't have the easiest, like, all those sports can't just hop on private jets and just yeah. get, easily get on planes and just fly whenever they want to. Mm-hmm. Like, Washington playing softball against, like, Rutgers right. on, like, a Wednesday afternoon. Like, who is that good for? Yeah. The travel is the hardest part, for sure. And like, there are people on the other side, which is it's just stupid to me, saying they got their educations, they got full rides, this is a great opportunity, who cares about them being tired and having it? like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, are you really just not going to, like, think of the human side of this? Right. Just even thinking about, like, the football guys that are really good college players that can't make the pros. Like, they're going to have to sacrifice a lot because they're going to be on the road. They still have to do studies and stuff. Like, the NFL guys, sometimes they just say, screw it, they don't care anymore. But the guys that are good in college but know they're not going to make it to the pro level. There are four or five year guys that went to a school because their family gets to see them play. Yeah. At least like every other week, your mom and dad, your grandparents, your your siblings, your family gets to come see you. Yeah. That that goes out the window mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah. And then the other side too, like the, for the fan side of it, it's great as well. Because you get, you know, different teams that you get to match up against. Um in I think for the Big Ten, you get some bigger matchups at times, um, which is helpful. But again, like we're just fans. We're not thinking about that aspect again. Yeah. Um, so you alluded to Oregon and Washington leaving. They are joining the Big Ten along with, like we talked about before, USC and UCLA. The Big Ten is now up to 18. Yeah, it's uh, the Big 18. That just rolls yeah, off the I, tongue, I don't. It? I don't understand how – how do you keep the how do you like keep the name the Big Ten? Now the geography doesn't matter anymore. No. And you don't and the numbers don't matter anymore. Like what why keep the names? Yeah. If you're changing everything, you need to basically change everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that makes what the Big Twelve, the Big Fourteen. They're up to they sixteen. Have, now. Sixteen even? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Big Sixteen and the Big Eighteen. <laughs> we gotta figure something like, out. Like I yeah, you just to me you just gotta throw the big stuff out of it. Unless you're yeah. just I don't know, man. They gotta find like, a new name. Yeah, it's it's strange. And <laughs> what everything that mattered and what made college football special, a lot of it is going out the window. Yeah. And as as a person that loves the sport so much, and was like caught in between of the old and the new, I'm still gonna watch college football nonstop. I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah. But old fans, where geography mattered, right? And it's it's just so weird. Yeah. Maybe they they can go uh, the Prince route and just be formally known as the Big Ten. <laughs> I, I'll give that joke a, a great 10 out of 10. So uh, they can I do something it. like that. I don't know. <laughs> um, For me, like, I, I could care less about, like, the old geography idea of it. Like, you know, I like the new idea, like, just being able to get new matchups, create new rivalries, potentially. Um, that kind of honestly intrigues me back into college football a little bit. Um, but it, it's weird too, because it, the other thing that I don't know is like scheduling wise, what if like, because there's now four West coast teams in the big 10, like, do they have like a West coast trip where they play like two games? Listen, man, this, this, down these are the, the things <laughs> Or are they gonna like go back and forth? Like I I I don't know if it's like the West Coast teams. <laughs> is it like you you go across the country four times, you stay on the West Coast the other times? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know. The other part no is scheduling is crazy now because if we're the Big Eighteen, they are they already set the schedules for the next two years. Did they? And how it was supposed to be? Yeah, how how it was supposed to make sense? Oh, before. 
before the Oregon Washington. Thing, yeah, right? they yeah. already had everything somewhat set up. Yeah, with UCLA and USC. Yeah, but adding now just, you, just, you got to like flip everything again. And, yeah, and just adding two more teams makes it twice as difficult because now you have four teams that you now have to add into these divisions. I mean, the thing that I think of is like, I, are they going to break up? The Big East, Big Ten East, and the Big Ten West. Oh yeah, they're breaking that up because like, they that's that's done. Are they gonna do divisions still, or is it gonna be? Listen, man, I don't know because I don't, like, do you do four pods of teams? Yeah, like that might make the most sense. I don't know. The Big Ten. I have no East, idea. West, North, South. Like eighteen teams, nine and nine. I, I don't. That yeah. They're, then, they're they're getting rid of what East and West because, eventually, I think. Because so. if you do nine and nine, you won't have room for a cross division game. Because you'll have to play all your division games. You usually have like exactly. some non conference games at the start of the season. How many games are in a college football season? I don't even know. Twelve. Twelve and then more if you're at like at the top. But right. So yeah, you you usually start with two to three out of conference games you start division play and then you have to play all nine but you don't ever have a cross division matchup Listen, I, I don't I, know how that works i have no idea it, it's really it's a mess <laughs> it is an absolute mess yeah but I, I think that the people that are making these big money decisions i don't think they care yeah i don't think they really care about the aftermath of like fixing as long as as long as the players are out there playing mm-hmm. and people are making money i I don't, they don't put they don't put real thought into these things. Yeah. Again, it'll be it'll be exciting because you think of it too like if you have to have uh, the one that people keep bringing up is like you're going to send one of these teams over to the Midwest in the middle of October, November. That's one of the parts I'm mainly excited for. I I want to see USC play at Iowa in November. Yeah. Right. I I I need to see that in my life. Yeah. So there, there's that's some, one of the few things. Yeah, there's some fun parts to it, but uh, the logistics—that's not my job. I <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna do it. Um, Listen, no, nobody asked for this. And the other nobody. The, the other problem that I have, and I don't know if you might have thought of this, but like the big, the Big Ten West and the Big Ten East are already so skewed as far as like power. Yeah, like the East is awful. You mean the West? The East has Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State. The West yeah. is awful. Yeah. Either the, way. The, the West has good teams. Yeah. The East has like two of the top programs in the country. Yeah. And then like two more really good programs. Right. The West just has good. Um, And now you're going to add four kind of – and these four teams, UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington, are all like right in the middle of that. They all would win the West. <laughs> yeah. Every team they added would win so, the West. That also, I like. I don't know how they're gonna balance anything. I, it's gonna be a mess. There is no logical, I, whatever they come up with. I I would think it was a miracle if they came up with something that makes sense. Yeah. Because I, how else do you do it? Unless you do pods, like where you do you keep the West Coast schools in their own section, and then this school's here, and then this. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Because. Uh, like, if you have the West Coast schools, then they would have to be able to play. Like, the ones that they would be able to play that, quote-unquote, easiest is, like, Nebraska, Iowa. That's about it, right? Maybe Wisconsin. And then everybody else is on the other side? Listen, I don't know. There, there is no, there's no good side besides people making money. There is no other positive. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's cool. USC plays Michigan. Ohio State plays USC, UCLA. Like, okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. They play each other every other year, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I, it's it's disgusting. It it doesn't make me happy at all. Yeah. The Big Ten. Well, they're going to have a lot of preseason ranked teams. And that uh, yeah. segues right into the last topic I want to talk about. The college football preseason top twenty-five for the coaches poll. Let me yeah. let me know if you agree with this list. Let, let's let's preface this by saying if you're a college football fan, you should know rankings don't matter until at least October. 
Right. But mm-hmm. this is what drives the media and what drives excitement. So yeah, yeah, we got to get into it. We wasn't Michigan. Michigan State was top twenty five last year, and we knew they weren't going to be as good as they were the year prior. Um, Georgia, number one, big surprise, no brainer. Your Michigan Wolverines, they sit at the preseason number two, Malik. You know what happened last time they were preseason top three? No, I don't actually. That's hilarious. Remember the the biggest upset in college football history? Oh where my, they lost it was to then? a certain team. Wow, that was the year they lost to Appalachian State. Yeah. They were preseason number two, I believe, in 2007. Dang. Yeah, they were preseason number two. So are they going to lose to East Carolina, UNLV, or Bowling Green? <laughs> They're not losing to any of them. Uh, it, it, it's just weird to hey, think. Hey, that's what they that said. That was the last time they were preseason number two. Okay. Um, I'm terrified of them being <laughs> ranked this high. Yeah. Is that what you want to hear? I, sort of. Listen, I, I don't know how to have championship expectations for Michigan. Mm-hmm. I still don't think they... This is the best and most stacked team they've had in years. Yeah. This should be one of the best teams in school history, maybe. Yeah. And I still don't think they have the talent to – I don't know if they have the talent to get over the hump. I will say the thing that scares me the most about this Michigan team, and we'll get into it more when we talk about straight Big Ten, their schedule feels like a cakewalk. Yeah. They, They have maybe two games that they should probably be afraid of. Yeah. And those are at the end of the season. Um, that always makes me really nervous. Um, Alabama is ranked third. They did get a couple of uh, number one votes. I'm um, surprised they're ranked ahead of Ohio State. Yeah. Because a lot of people are not like fully down, but are kind of wavering on Alabama because this is the first time their quarterback position is nowhere near solved. Mm-hmm. And, like, the season starts in September, and we're almost near the middle of August. Yeah. I don't know. I mean. They're still extremely talented, and they got they got draft picks all over the place. Right. So they're still going to be very good. Like, this is still Alabama. But, yeah, it's, it's – they we've known what their quarterback situation had for almost a decade. Mm-hmm. They've had a guy coming back that everybody believes is going to be good and usually right. is. But – you could kind of say the same thing about Ohio State, though, right? Like, who is, who's who's starting for them this year? It's, it's a battle between Kyle McCord and Devin Brown, but, like, Kyle McCord, he's, he's been sitting behind uh, – he was sitting behind C.J. Stroud for a few years. Mm-hmm. He was Marvin Harrison's quarterback in high school. He was a, almost a five-star guy. Okay. So People aren't afraid. People basically believe Kyle McCord is just going to step in and put up numbers. Okay. See, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Yeah. I know that Ohio State has one of the greatest skill position depth charts. They they just roll in five star receivers every year. It's I mean it's, the hype, it's automatic. The hype on Marvin Harrison Jr. just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And he deserves it. Um, which is the scary part. But then people forget too that they still have Emeka Buka yeah. behind him. Like it's pretty crazy. And they're running backs, they still like I didn't realize they still have like Travion Henderson and uh Mayan Williams even that we've seen. Yeah. It's for me, once again, like I said many weeks <clears throat> week after week last year, Ohio State has to prove to me that they are tough. Yeah. And I said it almost every week last year. They went against Michigan and they got punched in the mouth and mm-hmm. they got blown out. Yeah. At number five, we have kind of the big surprise for a lot of people, LSU. How do you feel about LSU? You think they're finally going to bounce back? They got the talent to make the playoff. Yeah. They, they've they got a lot of stuff. Cause they got two quarterbacks that they could start, and they could probably almost go undefeated. Mm-hmm. Like, Jaden Daniels is going to be the starter, but Garrett Nussmeyer is arguably a better passer, and he's the backup. Yeah. Like, he's the future guy, and they, they, they both can go in and win games. Yeah. And they're they're stacked all of their receiving core is stacked. Their defense is gonna be scary. Like it's LSU. Right. Then we have USC one final year before they join the Big Ten. And then uh Penn State, one of those tough games we we're talking about that Michigan will have at the end of the season. Neither of them will win their conference. Yeah. I'm predicting that. Well, USC will not <laughs> win the Pac twelve in their last year. Uh the defense still won't be that great. 
this is going to be Penn State, one of Penn State's best teams mm-hmm. of James Franklin's tenure. And uh, I'm going to save most of that for the Big Ten preview. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just going to give you a quick stat. You know James Franklin's record against top ten teams since he's been at Penn State? No. 3-20, and 20, Joey. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm just gonna leave that there for for the Penn State. I mean the the Big Ten preview. I feel like Penn State is kind of sitting in the position that Michigan had been prior to the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, Florida State, Clemson, Tennessee rounding out the top ten. Any of those teams kind of? I'm high on Florida State. Florida State and LSU play each other week one. That's gonna be a huge game. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Travis is back. He could be a Heisman contender. Trey Benson is one of the best running backs in the country. Keon Coleman is going to be Florida State's number two. Yeah. <laughs> Their number one is Johnny Wilson, who's 6'7", 220. They got a 6'7", and a 6'4", starting, yeah, two starting receivers. What are, if Florida State's like following their basketball ways. <laughs> Remember how they used to have all the huge guys be on their yeah. basketball team? Like they, Mike Norvell is finally getting Florida State. It's it's taken a, a few years, but he's, he's getting them back to where they should be. Yeah. Uh, Clemson. They won, they won 11 games last year, and people act like, acted like they weren't very good. Yeah. They won 11-3. and three. They surprised a lot of people. Yeah. Like, Cade, Cl- Cade Klubnick is returning uh, first time officially as the starter. They got a new offensive coordinator in Garrett Riley mm-hmm. from TCU Yeah, to try and switch things up from their like, kind of stale offense from the past few years. They'll be good. They, they should probably win the ACC. They're Clemson. Do you think Tennessee is going to be Michigan State this year and just – fall out of the top 25 first i believe in their offense too much i think josh heupel has recruited and done so well in the transfer portal to like fill up holes mm-hmm. and i think joe milton will actually live up to some of his potential this year okay joe milton by the end of this season this might be one of my hotter takes i was gonna say be careful there's gonna well this goes with qb hype joe milton will have first round qb hype by the end of the season hmm. because he has one of the strongest arms we have ever seen yeah. a fact. And if he puts it like together and actually can throw accurately for a whole season mm-hmm. and like plays well in the SEC, the hype is gonna go through the roof. Yeah. He's six five, two forty, he can run, he has like he, he has it all. Yeah. So okay. if he plays well, the hype will be insane. Yeah. And I think he will play well. Now will Tennessee be like really, really good again? I don't know. I think they'll still be good enough. Okay. They still got the talent. Then we got Washington, Texas, Notre Dame, Utah, and Oregon. Got a bunch of those uh, Pac-12 teams that will no longer be Pac-12. Out of that group, I'm going to pick out Texas. Okay. Because this is the first time since Colt McCoy, maybe, I think they actually have a team that should win the conference. Like, they they have elite talent Mm -hmm. at almost every position. And they're, like, really good football players. It's not elite athletes. That aren't very good football players. Yeah. Like they had in the like the Tom Herman era. And uh, they they've got dudes. Right. They have elite talent that can really get it done. Yeah. And it all comes down to Steve Sarkeesian. Hmm. Like they should win over ten games and they should potentially win the conference. They're that deep. Yeah. Then we have your arch nemesis, TCU. <laughs> <My arch. laughs> I still like TCU. Kansas, that was Michigan's fault while they yeah. lost. Kansas State, Oregon State, Oklahoma. And then UNC with one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Anybody um, you want to mention in that group? I feel bad for Drake May. <laughs> Recently, I think yesterday, his top receiver was the guy that was supposed to be the number one receiver who came out of the transfer portal, Tez Walker, came from Kent State. Mm. He got denied a waiver mm. like in the middle of their first week of training camp. So nobody knows if Tez Walker is going to play this season. Oh, so he doesn't have an, his number one guy. He still has talent. Yeah, but the guy that was like supposed to be his go-to guy might not play. We still don't know if UNC will ever have a good defense. Dang, it's going to be Drake May making everything happen again. So I I would be surprised if they won more than eight games. Like I, I think that's been like North Carolina's biggest problem is like rebuilding after they have successful seasons. Like you think a couple of years back when they had Javante Williams and Michael Carter, they lost both of those guys to the draft, and then they kind of had to figure out their running game, which they haven't really had in the last couple of years. 
now they come off a year where Drake May has been playing good, but now they don't have his top receivers, Josh Downs and Antoine Green. They and now they <laughs> have an issue with their top possible possible uh, top receiver that was going to replace them. So it seems like that that's been kind of North Carolina's biggest. I uh, I also problem. I don't know what the over under is for TCU wins, mm-hmm. but if it's like nine. Or if it's eight and a half or nine, I might bet under. Yeah. They replaced a lot. I really like everything they brought in through the transfer portal and what they still have. Yeah. But I for them to reclaim the magic that they rode last year. Yeah. They, a lot a lot of things had to happen for them to get to that national championship. Yeah, they're losing a thirty seven hundred yard passing quarterback with thirty two touchdowns. Yeah. Kendra Miller's gone. Quentin Johnson's gone. I was going to say, they're missing 1,400 yards in the running game, 1,000 <laughs> yards in the receiving yeah. game. Like, I, I like what they have, but yeah. I forget that Kendra Miller had 17 touchdowns. And they still they didn't win the conference championship, and they still made the national. That's how improbable their season was last year. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I like what their team could be, but yeah, I would bet under on those right. for TCU. And then rounding out the top 25, we got Wisconsin, Mississippi. Tulane, Texas Tech, and Texas A and M. Uh, Ole Miss might have the best running back in the country, and that's with Michigan having Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum. Mm-hmm. That's with Penn State having Nick Singleton. Quinshaw Judkins is a monster. As a true freshman at Ole Miss last year, he rushed for over seventeen hundred yards and like sixteen touchdowns, mm-hmm. like fresh into the best conference in the country. He's like he's almost six foot. He's like two hundred fifteen pounds. Yeah, he's got speed in the open field. He's he's a little elusive. He's got power. He's almost a complete running back. He's gonna be very hyped. Mm-hmm. I think that he's a true sophomore, so he's gonna have to play another year of college football. He's the truth. Yeah, and with Zach Evans gone, like he's gonna get even more carries. Yeah, which is gonna be crazy. But yeah, Lane Kiffin, he he has some things to prove because he had he has some. Good years with Matt Corral. Mm -hmm. Last year was a bit of a disappointment with Jackson Dart. Now you have him coming back. And word out of his the fall camp at Ole Miss is that he's improving. So yeah, I have to see how Ole Miss does. Mm -hmm. I love seeing group of five teams, and even if it's a preseason poll, Tulane, they won eleven games last year. Yeah, and they beat USC in the Cotton Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like Michael Pratt was a quarterback that a bunch of top teams wanted in the transfer portal, but he didn't transfer. He decided to stay at Tulane. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what Tulane can do. And Texas Tech over. Okay. Bet over for Texas Tech wins. I'm into this team. Interesting. Yeah. Save more of that for the Big Twelve preview. Yeah, I'm a serious Texas Texas Tech fan. Texas A and M should be better, but man, Jimbo Fisher just he rubs me the wrong way in terms of football coaches. He's so stubborn and uppity. I just, he's like, he's one of those other, I mean, those old Southern football coaches where they're like, well, if everybody just does their job, like, yeah, Jimbo, your scheme is from like the eighties. You need to, he has brought in an offensive coordinator. Yeah. So it should help. He has a a ton of talent. Hmm. Texas A&M should win at least eight games. If they don't, Jimbo could get fired soon. Yeah. But yeah. Hmm. It's like all these high school teams running the veer. Stop it. I'm tired of it. It's so- it's, it still works, <laughs> especially if you don't have all the talent. It, it still works. Run the option. That really grinds my gears. I, <laughs> if we wanted to go on, on that, I, I don't want to waste our time. Listen, but Because of some rule changes, Navy and Army can't run the option the way they used to. Yeah. Like, they have to speed up a little bit, and it hurts my heart. <laughs> run, Let them run the option. Come yeah. on. I, I think the option's a little more fun than the veer, but. Yeah, the, the veer, that's old school. Whew. That's tough. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going into it. I'm not going into it. It's too much. Um, all right. That's uh, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, we got some top 25 news. Uh, next week, we'll probably go over preseason game. I, I got to start talking Lions a little bit. Um, I just got that itch. Just want to. Just want to be able to have some good news about the Lions. Yeah, I think I think my first preview next week will be the the death nail of the Pac-12. Oh, gosh. That might be my first preview. The final season. Yeah. They're going to have to make it 30 for 30 on this. They, they probably will. How did the Most Pac-12 definitely. kill themselves? 
slowly, uh, but surely they do. Awful. Anyway, um, I don't think there's going to be even any other news to talk about. We'll see. We this time of the year is so weird, um, but we'll do some college football preview. Talk about some NFL preseason stuff. And uh, yeah, this has been views from the sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>